<laughs> just scan in color. That's all you have to know. <laughs> now, uh, resolution, resolution. We had um, someone mention that resolution is how many pixels per inch, or the misnomer is dots per inch. But pixels per inch, dots per inch, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, okay? Same thing. Um, I recommend 300. No less than 300. Some of you want to, might do 600. Some of you may do 1200, maybe more. Now, if you're scanning a negative that's a 35 millimeter, that's, that's a little different. You might have to really uh, quadruple that resolution or get to this next part, which is called scale. And let's see if I can get in that, on, and it shows up, scale. Now scale is also known as uh, magnification, magnification. So if I'm going to scan a, a, uh, a picture that's a 4 by 6, I should scan it at least 300 pixels per inch, and the magnification should be at least 100%. Why should it be at least 100%? Someone raise your hand if you know. Okay. Because 100% is the exact size. So if I'm going to scan a 4 by 6 at 100% magnification, the, the finished scanned file is going to end up being 4 by 6. If I go less than 100%, let's say 75% or 50%, let's say I scan it at 50%, it would be not a 4 by 6. Someone? 2 by 3. 2 by 3. Okay, so you got to keep track of these two things. Keep track of that resolution, keep track of that magnification. That trips a lot of people up. And even, to, to, even for me to this day, <laughs> I'm still, oh God, I need to rescan that. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, go ahead. If you're working on a small photo. Yes. You know, very small. Right. <clears throat> you want to kick your uh, scale up Right. Three, four hundred percent. Right. So you're working on a small photo. In fact, let's start right now because we are working on a kind of small picture. I, I'm going to hit the preview button here and it will tell us, it will give us a, a, a little uh, uh, preview of what we're looking at. Yes, if you have a small photo and you suspect that you might need it bigger, I definitely recommend scanning it at more than a hundred percent. I'd say at least 150%, you know? Now, I'm not giving you any magic numbers here. You have to learn by doing, so you have to practice. And one way to do that is to scan, work, edit it or whatever, and then make a printout. And then notice the differences, what happens if you if you, scan, if you scan at 72 pixels per inch instead of 300. What happens if you scan, you know, you have to ex experiment and, and learn how that works. So here is, is our little picture. I will set the crop boundaries here because I want to tell the scanner, look, you don't need to scan the whole bed. Just scan this image area. Now notice that the photo is slightly well, it's not put up to the top left corner of the glass, right? It's kind of in the middle of the glass. Anybody know why, I'm, why I did that? Lower distortion? Uh, you've already, t I got to go on to someone else. <laughs> yes, ma'am, in the back. Raised your hand, someone raised your hand. No, I was going to go with oh. the same answer. Oh, you were saying, okay, okay, say, right. Yes, there's, there's, it's much better in the middle because there's fall off on the edges. The scanner does, isn't as, you won't get as much detail on the edges as you would in the middle, okay? So, yeah, if you have a big picture, there might be a little fall off of detail. For me, I notice it. For you, you might not. But I just want to give you the best advice. All right? Why did you put that... Uh, your business card in the back over the thing for white. Well, and how you know that's my business card? <laughs> yeah, notice I turn it over so it wouldn't be a blatant advertisement. Um, 
yeah, I put that there because it's a nice straight edge, a straight edge. Otherwise, without it, maybe the picture would be a little crooked, and I'd have to crop it later. I thought you were trying to set like white balance for that. No, I was not trying to set a white balance for that. I would not want to do something like that in the scanner necessarily. And I'm glad you brought that up because before I do the final scan, every scanner software has a configuration or preferences. And here's for my color settings. I have no color correction checked. See this box down here? No color correction. Auto exposure, I have it right in the middle or recommended value. I don't want to do, I don't want my scanner doing any color corrections for me. I want to do that in my photo editing program. Okay? You understand? You want to do it, it's like, it's like when anyone here taking photography classes? And maybe you've had a teacher that says, turn off that auto exposure, turn off that auto focus. At least my teachers told me that, you know. And I didn't understand why until I started learning how to do it myself. I said, wow, I need to know how to do it first. Then I can use auto when necessary. But I'd say for your scanner, you really don't need it. So we got our preview. Now, Another thing that I have my scanner software do is I have it saved directly to my computer. Notice I'm not loading Photoshop or Elements or some other program, PaintShop Pro, and then importing from the scanner. I'm saving directly to the hard drive. That will allow me to have a custom file name like you see me doing here. and choose a place where I'm going to save it. In, in this case, I'll, I'll make a folder on the, on the desktop. We'll call it library, if I can spell it right. I didn't write library. OK. And choose. And I gave it a prefix. I, I, I went uh, uh, AH, did I get A? Arlington Heights Memorial public library <laughs> dash and then the start number I have it at one now every scan hereafter it will automatically assign the next number so the next scan I do will be 002 so this is great if you're working on your family photos and let's just say you happen to have a nice little stack for a certain surname or a certain family group this is a great way to go about scanning it to stay organized See, I'm tying it into genealogy, you know. Now, image format. If you're going to tell the scanner to save directly to your computer, you've got to tell it what file format to save it as. How many of you save your scans if you've done scanning in JPEG? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you saved them in TIFF? Ah, okay. All right. We have an advanced student here. <laughs> we have a tip back there. I, I yeah. was wondering what the comparison between JPEG and PNG would be. Okay, well let's, don't let me leave the topic before getting back to that. Let me first go to something very, very important. <laughs> if you fall asleep this morning during this presentation, do not do it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen to me. From today on, you will save all your files that you scan as TIFF. And you will no longer save them as JPEG. I want you to say after me, I will save my originals I will save my originals as TIFFs, not JPEG. Why? Okay, good. I have a, a hand back there, yes? When I did that recently on our scanner, okay. we were kind of feeling our way, I could not open it up on that computer because I had to open it up on the other computer and I forwarded it to people and no one complained that they could not open it, but we were really puzzled 
about why we could not open it on the computer that was written, written